Welcome to day three of the Do It Messy Jumpstart. Now you've done your preparation for your online portfolio, so let's put it together. Today, you'll be creating and publishing the first prototype of your website. I say first prototype because we're doing it in a messy style. And trust me, you will edit and perfect your website many, many times in the near future. Today, the aim is to have it ready and know how to create a website, especially if you've never made one before. If you're using Google Sites, this video has a full tutorial for you. If you're using a different platform to create your site, stay around for the next seven minutes to see what we'd like you to have achieved by the end of the day and then skip the rest of the video. Please remember that your portfolio is yours, so feel free to do it your way. Anyway, I have Academy member and our Academy coach, Yvette, here to show you all she knows about Google Sites. So let's get started. Hi, everybody. I'm here to help you with your Google Sites and help you complete your day three of the Do It Message Challenge, but also give you a bit more information about how Google Sites works and how else you can customize your Google Sites further to make it your own. Um, my name is Vet Chodesh. I'm an IDOL coach and IDOL member, an instructional designer, and I created my website with Google Sites and I'm a massive fan of Google Sites. Um, some people might disagree with me and think that Google Sites is actually very basic and I do agree with you, but I think that's part of the beauty of it as well because um, there are so many things that you don't need to do in Google Sites that are kind of done automatically for you that are a bit more challenging in other website builders. Um, I did try WordPress, um, hated it, and I also tried Wix, loved it, and I loved the freedom that was there. But Google Sites, I went back to Google Sites after Wix because I just thought Google Sites, everything was free, everything was easy, and... Um, and yeah, so let's get started. This video will have two sessions, really. Um, in the first half, I will show you what it is that we'd like you to have achieved by the end of the day, really. So what is kind of required for the day three Do It Message Challenge. And then after that, if you want to go and head edit your uh, Google Sites, that's fine. Or if you want to continue watching the video, that's also fine. Because in the second half, I will tell you more about how you can customize Google Sites and what um, what is available for you, etc. So, you know, you could stay with me until the very end and then go and do what you need to do. Or you could just switch off or whatever. But everything will be included in this video that I think is worth knowing. So you can always come back to it anyway later if you want. So let's get started. Um, so I created a demonstration for you. So I'm just gonna talk you through first what it is that we'd like you to have done by the end of the day, okay? So this is what my demo looks like. Let me scroll down a bit, can't scroll down can scroll down. Cool. So we want you to have your website published, of course. Um, we want you to have something here, okay? Um, not necessarily a logo yet, but you can decide if you want to add it later. But we want you to put either your name here or your company or whatever you want to do. As you can see, I put Eva Chodash for Idol and that's what appears here in the tab as well, okay? We also want you to have the, the menu set up, okay? So we have, well, everything is up to you really. So what I'm showing you is my way of doing things, but this is your website, this is your portfolio, this is you know your personal decision. So if you wanna make changes um, from my sample, that's fine. If you did uh, day one of the web messy, you have seen sample portfolios anyway, and you will have seen that every portfolio is different, the categories, the icons, the, you know, whatnot. But we want you to have the menu ready um, I'm using the home portfolio about me, contact me. I know that some people use achievements or some people, if they have a side business, they would have blog posts or graphic design or whatever combined with it. So it's completely up to you what kind of menu you want to create, but it's recommended you have a home, obviously a portfolio and an and about me something about you. And within the portfolio, we should have a couple of sub pages as well, the different kind of categories that you created icons for yesterday. Um, my preference, again, and it's again 
up to it was up to me. I'm using scripting and storyboarding, e-learning development, job aids and infographics, and instructor-led training. Um, I also have a passion project uh, category on my website. I've seen people using videos as a completely different category. Some people call job aids, for example, learning materials. So again, it's up to you how you want to create these categories, how many categories you want to create. Um, this is just a, a sample. Okay, then we should have a nice heading customized according to your brand identity and then scrolling down you should have something luring the, the audience into these four categories or however many categories you will have here. So these icons here correspond to those things in the menu. Um, when we click on it, I already had it, added these as um, um, hyperlinks so let's just look at the preview so if you click on these um, let's, let me scroll down a bit I don't know why I can't scroll today if you click on it they will take you to the right page so hopefully that will be set up for you as well so I'm coming back to the home page and I'm not scrolling again no idea why okay and then um, you should have let me close the view the preview so you should also have the footer set up, um, whatever you want to include. Again, some people add a trademark, some people add further links here, so that once people scroll down to the bottom of the page, they can still easily access these pages. But have your footer done by the end of the day as well, that would be great. Um, within the portfolio, uh, I didn't update these much further because I think it's going to be a challenge anyway for you to do some of the things uh, if it's your first time with Google Sites, but just have the page ready. We also have an About Me, um, that one is ready as well, and the Contact Me. And if you look here on the right-hand side, you will see that I also have two pages that are not visible at the moment. That's why the icon is different here. These are hidden. That means that they're not showing up here in the menu, but I created them. And these are for the individual um, projects, individual assets. So I just gave it a, a random title using Camtasia and I created kind of a layout for it um, that you would use with your individual assets, um, the tools, the time, the client and the collabor collaborators here. And then when you do your um, needs analysis, um, then you would write down the challenges here, the solution and the result. It is in the Academy, there's a template for um, for that somewhere there. And I also did that for another one just so that it's ready when your asset is done. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to come over to Google Sites. I've already Googled Google Sites. Um, actually, there are two ways to start your Google Site. One is from your drive. Okay, so if you have a Google Drive, um, you can actually create it just like a Word document. It, Google Drive is actually like a Word document, but Google turns it into a website, really. So you could start from here, plus new, and then you see, where was it? Google Sites here. But I actually recommend starting, if it went further down, I actually recommend starting from here. And the reason for that is because when you open it from here, and I tried it yesterday, you get a few more options here. So you can see when you do that, that there are some um, templates here already, and you could see all my websites here. Um, but you could check out the templates if you want, but actually Google Sites is so easy to use that it's probably easier to start with a blank template and just uh, create ev um, everything from scratch. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's start creating that Google Site. Cool. At the moment, it looks very blank. Everything is up to us. The beauty of Google Sites is that so many things are easily customizable, easy to drag around, but actually, it's not the best for creating content. So most of the content that we will have on our Google site will have to come from outside sources, mainly Canva. I mainly use Canva for that. So let's start over here in themes. Okay, this is the first and probably the last time you will visit themes. It probably had more purpose before 
um, some of the new updates in Google Sites came out. Now, not so much. The only purpose we're going to, um, the only points that we're going to have here is that we're going to add our brand color, the main color. There's only one that Google Sites allow you to have, and it's going to remember it, but everything else will have to done uh, will have to be done manually. So that's my brand color. Just to show you um, what things means and what it does is, for example, let me just try my full website. If you come to themes and you change it, ah, nothing's happening. Okay, so in some cases it's not even affecting anything, but in some cases it does affect quite a lot. So I do not recommend that you touch this. Oh, there you see, you see. So for example, that completely changes. Oh, and it messed up everything here. You see how much uglier it is now. So that's why I don't recommend that you touch the themes once you have set your mind on the theme. So I'm going to go back to my simple theme. Okay, just wanted to show you what the themes does. In this version, you can clearly see how it, never, um, how it alters the heading but please I do recommend that you make your mind up before you start oops before you start um, editing your page because as I as you just as you've just seen it will make changes to the existing content later so I'm going to stick to simple I have added my brand color again the font style doesn't matter that mattered in the past uh, when there were less options available in Google Sites, but not anymore. So really doesn't matter what you choose because we're going to customize um, every single text um, separately, individually, one by one. Okay, then we're going to come to Pages. I'm going to create those four um, main pages that I had in the sample that I showed you. So the way we're going to do that is click on New Page and just add the name. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Okay, so that's done. Now we need to add those sub pages that you had with portfolio. By the way, this is so easy. If you want to drag some of these around, you can. And now about me comes before portfolio, so that's really easy to edit things. So what I want to do now is add some um, sub pages to the portfolio. So I'm going to click on this. Let me just show you again. Click on these um, dots and then add sub page. And I'm going to add that sub page to the portfolio section. And let me just type in I had scripting. And I'll do the same again. Don't worry about what it looks like now. We can change it later. And I'm just going to speed it up a little bit and then add the other sub pages as well. Okay, so that's done. Look, if we come here, they all appear now and we can uh, click on them. Now, if you make a mistake like I did, I didn't capitalize AIDS, then you just double click here and then you can easily edit things. Again, it's the same thing as it was before. You can easily drag and drop things around. So for example, now I can move it out and then make it a completely new um, menu item or um, edit drag it under about me and now it's part of about me so it's really easy to drag items around and then just restructure your um, google site okay what are we missing we're missing those two pages that i had here that i showed you that they were kind of hidden from the navigation because i will link these items later somewhere so this we're going to create these the same way you can edit a new page or you can edit as a sub page um, let me do that quickly the perfectionist in me can't help correct any kind of mistakes I just call them uh, sample 1 and sample 2 but you can call them whatever you want to call them we're not going to fill these in yet we're just going to have these ready for the future now these actually at the moment appear here in the drop down menu but we don't want that because we want to hide these so we're going to click on the three dots here and we're going to select hide from navigation and now you can see that the icon changed so that means that 
you know, it no longer appears. So let's do that with the sample two as well. And there we go. Now, now that we're talking about these three dots, I just want to mention what's it, what else is available. If you decide that you want something else, your homepage, let's say you want to swap these around, you can make your about me page your homepage. There we go. Swap page uh, places and you see the icon here changed as well. Let me just change it back now, make homepage. So it's back and I'm just going to drag this about me down because I prefer having it here cool and then just let's just close it what else is available uh, you can duplicate a page which is great especially if you're creating pages like this I just duplicate these once they are formatted properly and then the only thing I need to do is um, change the um, actual information in there okay properties I never touch property properties if I'm honest don't know what it does <laughs> and then we have We've covered all the others, you can delete them later. All right, going back to actually adding things. I, no, not yet. We're going to look at the heading because the heading is what everybody sees first. So, actually, we haven't done this yet. So, um, sorry about that. So, I called it Evatoras for Idol. I'm going to add my whatever I want to appear here. As you, as we mentioned, that will appear here, Evatoras. Again, let's just call it that. Now, this one here is basically just for you. Um, the Google site is going to be saved in your Google Drive. So whatever is here in that box is what will appear in your Google Drive. So you could just say whatever you want, like little girl, um, whatever. just a silly name, just to show you that this is not going to show to anybody, just in your Google Drive. This is how you will identify your website. Okay, so that's done. Let's talk about the header. Now, the header is, um, is really important and a lot of people kind of mess it up because Google Sites, as I said, is great, but not so great. Google Sites will automatically decide whether your website uh, sorry, let me clarify that. Google Sites will decide how it will scale down to um, the mobile view, okay? And that is an issue. Let me just show you first the options that you have. You have the cover option, a large banner option, a banner option, and then the title only option. Most people choose the banner option, so I'm going to stick to that. Actually, there was one thing that I completely forgot to show you when I talked to you about the uh, the things that we want to have finished by the end of the day, and that was the preview. So if you come here, I'm gonna, so I'm back with the demonstration that I created for you. If you go to preview, you should check what your website looks like. This is actually quite imperative to check what your website looks like because you might realize that something looks one way in the editor itself, but then it will look completely different once you click here, okay? So just keep an eye on that. And here, it's really, really important that you check the mobile view as well because some things can be distorted when you come here. So when you finish your website, please make sure that it looks good in your mobile view as well. Otherwise, um, you will have to come back to it. Now, the tablet view is something that I am not keen on checking because it's actually quite difficult to have everything perfectly done in the large screen view and the phone view. So I sometimes ignore it because look, I spent, no, there's no issue now, but even on my website, there are a few issues that I just can't be bothered. Let me just show you. I just can't be bothered to correct anymore because it was really hard to get right in both views. So you could see, for example, this is not perfect. Like we've got an S here at the end. I could try and fix it, but it looks good in mobile view. There you go. And it looks good like this. So I'm happy with that. So. That's just what I wanted to mention about the mobile view because by, because I, fe I forgot to cover it earlier. Now, uh, we chose the banner size, so let's go back. And now we need to change the image. Now, whenever it comes to images, um, you can upload images from here for other um, sections. But for the header, op um, only, you can only upload these from here. But the options are basically the same. You can upload. And I believe that's the most common 
um, image editing option that we'll use or you can select an image but when you select an image you only get a limited options you can choose something from your from a gallery that is provided you can do that why not or you can use a URL URL or search or even your albums or your Google Drive I'm not going to show you what is in my in my album but you could try it for yourself but most of us will upload content so let's let me show you a few tricks here now um, what I do is I have, I normally upload just the background, okay? So you could see that the, what I'm aiming for looks like this, but I don't want to upload these as an image, okay? I upload these as two images and I'll tell you in a bit why. If you uh, use Canva and some people have used Canva in the past, uh, Canva has some website templates. If you use any of these, they're great, but please do not just download these um, and upload them. Now, let me show you why. So, let me take this out. There we go. Because I already uploaded something, and I want, to, I want you to see what happens if you just take some kind of content from Canva and edit. Right, and this is not that bad. So, I created this in Canva. And I want to show you what happens. So, uh, yeah, by the way, sometimes when you upload a header image, it changes what it looks like because it expects you to add something on top of it. So it adjusts it for read read readability, but you can remove it here so it goes back to the original format. Now, click on preview and you'll see that because Google Sites registers it as a background, not as an image with it of any importance, it basically moves it down. This doesn't look like the original. I'm quite lucky that it looks good in mobile view and um, tablet view, but it's not what I want in the large screen view. And usually what happens in the Academy is that um, it looks good in, in the large screen view, but it doesn't look good in the mobile view. So we've got, the, we've got this the other way around. Let me show you another one, what I mean. So you upload an image. Um, actually, I'm going to show you my LinkedIn one. Okay, I upload it. I promise you that image looked much better in the original version, but Google Sites doesn't really know what to do with it, so it already distorts it. Now, remember what it looks like now and see what it will look like, even if it was a better image see what it will look like in mobile view. There we go. So the mobile view completely cuts off the edges and it's not the same image as here. Oh, it looks great here actually. So that's why I do recommend that you use a background. Where was it again? That you use a background but you build everything else separately. No, oh, not this one this one okay so once you have your background what you could do is you can add text so we're going to add text unfortunately it appears underneath but you can easily drag and drop items within Google Sites and then you could write and And then let's say you decide, obviously, that's not the size I want, so you highlight the text and then you make it bold, even bigger. There we go. And then my name, I'm going to make it much, much bigger. There we go. But you see, I mean, I'm using a different um, background, obviously. If you use the plain white background or a plain gray background and you didn't have that uh, purple thing to worry up to worry about then it might be different but look looks good not so much because it cuts in so I do recommend and I'm going to finish talking about the headings in a minute but I do recommend that you kind of import things because it will look prettier anyway so I'm going to delete this and then um, can you guess what is happening here? I added an image. And so 
I'll upload an image. So I select images from here, okay? And I, you know, we've got the same options here. I'll upload an image. And that's gonna be, I've got so many documents in my website folder. It's branding. And then I'm just gonna drag it up here. Okay, okay. So now we've got an image. What we can do with the image is you can actually like make it bigger. Oops, it's a bit slow. There we go. Make it bigger. And then you could move it around. Again, Google Sites has limitations. It only can put things. Can you see those um, vertical lines? Those are the only positions where Google Sites allows you to put co uh, content, any content really. So you have to stick to these, but it will show you when it's in the middle. Now I want to put it here. But as you can see, mm, it's kind of in the middle. That's not what I want. I want it further down. So you can see here that I've already changed it. Now navigating space um, is possible in Google Sites, but we need to be clever. So I'm going to add a text box. I'm just going to drag it up here. There we go, up here. Oops, drag it back to where it was. And then I can nev like I can stretch it out like that. And you see Google Sites will do its job by predicting kind of what I want or just adjusting the height of the background according to that. Yeah, so I'm gonna check it. Looks good, looks even better. Great, done. So that was the heading. Now, what we need to do is then we should add more things to, let's get started. So we now know how to add images. Um, we're going to look at the layouts. So when you add anything, you can use these six um, different layouts. And they're quite good because you can just easily um, add the whatever you want to add. So this is the one that I was using. And what you do is you just click on this plus and then it gives you options what you can do with it. We're going to upload an image. Okay. Now that you know how it is done, I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to do the same with all of these. Click the plus icon in the middle and then just choose the image that I want to use. Okay. So bear with me. Okay, so that's done. I want to show you something else about images because I know that, for example, this one looks a bit smaller than the other. So what you can do is you can click here and then you can drag it or make it bigger. Oops, it's a bit uh, slow. But that's actually not the best option because as you can see, with, with it, um, this kind of uh, tilted up a little bit. So I'm going to press Control Z and put it back to normal. So if that ever happens, the answer is to click on the image itself until it's actually just the image. As you can see, this is not the image at the moment. So I'm going to click again. And here you can crop. Or if you double click, this will come up as well. So what you can do is uh, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. So if there's an alignment issue with one of your um, images or anything, you can do that. You can even drag the content um, into the middle and then click here and that's done. I'm going to leave it like that because that's not the point of the presentation, but you see what you can do with the images here. Okay, let's add the text here as well. Cool. Now let's talk about font then. At the moment, um, these all look plain. 
Um, there is actually no way to store a lot in Google Sites, as I said. The only way to add one color was in themes, but there's nothing else to store. So unfortunately, you will have to do everything manually. So what you need to do if you want to change a font or anything about your text is highlight it. Okay. You could choose between a normal text title, heading, subheading, small text, but um, in most cases, I still have to go further and customize it further. So for example, if I change it to a subheading, mm, yeah, it looks better. Maybe I keep it, maybe I don't. Um, the other thing is you can obviously customize the font size, add bold, italics, underline, or change the text color. And you can change the text color here. Now, this doesn't remember the uh, brand color that you put in, so you have to do that manually again, but it, you will only have to do that once because then it will remember. Cool. So let's say I did it that color and then I come here and you see it remembers now. So um, let me just change this back. I don't want that, so Control Z, Control Z. What else did I want to show you? Oh, yes, I don't like the Leto. It's too simple and I want to use something. Now, if you have your own uh, font choice, then you just click here and then choose any of the fonts that you want to add. Now, you might have less at the moment. It's because I've already added some fonts and my Google account remembers it. But if you want to add more fonts, just click more fonts and search for whatever you want to add. Um, there's nothing, whatever. And then you could click on it if it's not part of your library yet. Amiri, there you go, it's added now. If you want, if you want to manage your font, font sorry, um, you can just click here and move it. There we go, I don't need these anymore. Too fancy. Okay, right, mine is Enriqueta and I wanna remove these anyway because it always takes me a long time to scroll down. But this is the way to add fonts and then when you click here, if I hadn't um, deleted Amiri, it would appear here and you could just select it. But remember to highlight things first anyway. And then you could um, use left align, middle align. I actually like left align, so I'm gonna do that with all of them. And then we're ready to go. And then if you want, you can use numbered list, bulleted list. Um, you, can, you can even man, um, play with the line spacing, indents, etc. strike through, I'm not sure what that is for, or clear formatting completely, and it goes back to the original one. Oh, I wanted to change the um, font. Cool. Um, let's see, what are we missing? Oh, we're missing a heading. So we're going to come to insert. And we're going to insert a text box. And um, what I do, we're going to drag it up here because that's not where it should be. So you just um, hover over here until you see this, um, this cross symbol and then just drag, oops, I lost it. Sorry, my mouse is a bit silly today. So drag it until you see that blue line and just drop it there. And we're going to make it, um, let's turn it into a title and see what happens. Oh, you see it remembered your color. Oh, my color actually. So I'm going to change it again to Enriqueto or whatever it's called. Bold. And I'm going to, oh, I don't like it, but I'll leave it now. And I'm going to align it in the middle. There we go. That's done. Yay. All right, let's move on to the footer. Okay, so you hover down, edit footer, and I'm going to add Okay. Right. Um what I want to show you now is adding hyperlinks. So what we'll do is I'm going to highlight this and click on the hyperlink. And I want to link it to the home 
Oh, it doesn't show because we're in the home. I'll show you how to do that later. So I'm going to edit portfolio and add a link. Now we have two options here. We can either just take a link from any other outside source and then just drop the HTML link here, the HTTP whatever link here. And then if people click on here, then they will be taken to that website. Or if it's an internal uh, website where you want to uh, direct them, then it will appear here and then you could just scroll down or you could just start typing it in and it will be bring up things from your Google site, not just Google site, sorry, your Google Drive. Okay, so there we go. Um, it changes it. I'm not going to bother about it, but you can override these changes that are done automatically once you add a link. You can just um, click on underline and it will be taken away. So insert link. Now the reason why I'm not able to edit the home because it looks for links that are not on your current page but I'll show you once we go here or anywhere really outside then we will be able to do that so edit footer and now it appears you see cool okay now let's change the color of this and this is a trick. A lot of people don't know how to change the background color to something else. So when you click here, when you look here, section background, you could change the section background. You have three built-in choices, white or a nice gray. It's the same gray for everybody, I believe. It's really nice, actually. I use it a lot. Or the color that it remembered from when you set up your color. The only way to work around this and add a different color is if you add an image. So, as you can see, in my um, website folder, I have some backgrounds, not here, sorry. Um, I have, let me show you in a bigger view what they are. No? Oops, I don't know. Okay, I wanted to show you. I've got basically a yellow box here. Okay. There we go, sorry. So I basically have a yellow box here. It's nothing but a, a an image that I saved and it only has yellow in it, nothing else. And that is how we can create background color. You see? Um, Google Sites basically imports it and displays it, but Google Sites has no idea that it's not an image, but just an image of a simple color. So that's it. That's how you can manipulate background colors. Okay, let's go back because we were not finished. Um, what we haven't done yet is we haven't linked those images of these sections to the actual websites. The process is basically the same. You highlight whatever you want to add and then we're going to insert link and then uh, choose the right website. Uh, let me do that quickly. Oops. Cool. If you want to check if something is linked, you just come here. Oh, I haven't done that. I really didn't, actually. Um, I forgot to press apply. But then this is how you can troubleshoot. You can see that this is... Um, oh, it has it. Ah, I keep... Yeah, this one has it. I'm really sorry about my mouse today. Anyway, cool. Now, um, if you want to drag things around, this is what I love about Google Sites the most, that you can easily rearrange things. Right, so if you want to, let me just show you another trick. You can just duplicate it, okay, and we've got the same twice, so I can, I don't have an issue with deleting things. So let's say I want to rearrange it, but I don't want to mess it up, I'm just going to put it in the bin for now, and then now I have a bit more freedom to move these around. Oops, ah. so I want to have scripting and storyboarding first, and then this one last. And then I'm just going to drag this up here from here. And then that's sorted. Another thing I wanted to show you in my original website, this is a completely different layout. 
Um, this is another thing I love about Google Sites. Let's say you change your mind and you want to refresh something about your website. Again, I'm just going to duplicate it so nothing's lost when I delete things. I'm just going to delete this so I can create more space for myself. I'm just going to drag this up here. There we go. I'm just going to delete this one as well. Everything. I'm just going to drag this here. Cool. Um, I can delete this one now. And this one. I'm going to, oh, not that was the other one, Control Z. Oh, I actually accidentally uploaded the wrong image. Never mind, it's just a tutorial. Um, sorry about that. I'm just going to drag it up here uh, and then delete this out here. There we go. So you have a completely new layout. And if you want to add more information, like I had on my original website, you just da -da -da, drag it up here and then you've got text to it here as well. That's the beauty of Google Sites. Okay, we're finally done on the main page. On the portfolio, what, when I'm going, I'm not going to what, um, change it too much. I'm just gonna upload a different image. That one, perfect. And yeah, I'm just gonna put portfolio, just change the color. Perhaps change the, the font. Okay, again, I'm not a huge fan of central alignment, not uh, even here. So I'm just going to drag this out here. So it's, yep, cool. All right, that's done. Um, normally, let me just try this because it didn't work yesterday, but it should. It works with other contact content. No, it didn't work. Okay, apologies. So I'm gonna change the image here as well. Same process. Actually, it, it you see it imported the name of the page. So what I can do is I can edit it the same way as this was done, or I can, let me see if it works, I hope it does, I'm just going to delete it and take this, I'm going to click Control C, Control V, ah, oh, still not, I don't know, is it an update, it used to work, no it didn't work. But, oh, it did. Okay, cool. You see what I did? So I copied this um, from here, um, inserted it here, and even though it appeared smaller and down here, once I dragged it up, it was, um, it, it appeared the same way as in the previous one. So I can just change the text and I don't have to worry about all the editing and it will look exactly the same. Okay, let's do that here too. Unfortunately, I was not able to uh, import the image background. This, this is going, getting really long. Okay, so the only thing that we're missing now, let me just see, do we have everything right? Yeah, that looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, the only thing we're missing is now is these pages, the formatting of these pages. It's gonna be really simple to create that. I'm just gonna create a header type. I'm just gonna title only. You can change the title if you want. So we're talking about these hidden pages here. And just to create the layout, very simple. So you can see this is a template. So I'm just gonna drag the template here from insert, which one was the template? That, oh, this was the template that I used. You see, I deleted this here, I don't want that, and I started adding the, let me just copy and paste it from there. Oops. Ah. You know what, I use Mac at home and uh, Windows at work. 
and it sometimes confuses me especially when it comes to control versus command okay all good now and then here all I did was to create this was create a new text box so let me just see text box and then we had challenge and then the text and I just wanted to have this in my brand um, identity my brand font and color and size cool looks good and then what I will do is I don't want to mess around with the rest I'm just going to duplicate duplicate and just change the headings here so it's challenge solution and the result cool all right I'm just I already have it saved control C but I can just do it again control C um, and then when I go to the other page just you know, control V ah. oh, actually that's not too bad either um, I press the wrong buttons again <laughs> so control C there we go again and again and then I'm not going to bother changing it for you because that's not what the tutorial is about um, to perfect something that's an example but again you can do that with this whole box here we couldn't do that with the heading but it should be possible with whole boxes so I'm just going to highlight this whole box here control C hopefully it will be the right one this time and I'm just going to press control V, v. there we not have it oh okay so I should have clicked outside control V there we go it imported it as it was so you can easily um, it looks like it's it's tedious to edit everything manually but once you have something set up you can easily just duplicate it so I'm missing one of these because I accidentally deleted it control C control V there we go and then you could change the heading that's it oh let's do this header type as well title only looks much better that's it that's done that's what you need to do today um, make sure that it looks good in both mobile and big view as well looks good home oh, looks good a bit spaced that oh it's because I didn't go back to the original version I messed around with you with it to show you how um, that would be done so that's why we have those big spaces because Google Sites recognize this this space but doesn't know what to do with it but if it had been the original version like it was here um, then it would look good let's see let's see looks good okay so the only thing that you have to do now is publish so Click publish and then you get the option to um, change the name that will appear after sites.google.com if you have your domain that's a completely different question how you can add your own domain you can probably do that here I never did that because I had a completely different um, uh, route to that and you can see who can wants to manage your website if you want to give permission to other people but just press publish and now you can start sharing your link copy publish link site publish site link and then you will be able to copy the link from here and share it in the community okay so don't go away or you can go away it's up to you that was just part one of today's lesson so now you are ready to edit your website if you want to stay behind i will be going through um the other editable uh, the other other no, the other editing options and show you how you can do more things with Google Sites. Okay, let's see that. So I was, I'm just going to come back here to that site that I use for the demonstration.
Now we talked about themes, we talked about pages. I just wanted to show you a couple more things. In the insert section, we didn't talk about it for the Do It Messy Challenge, but you have two more options. You can embed things. And when you embed, you can um, add a URL, uh, which is like a, a, a link, and that item will be embedded. Now it's usually used with videos, YouTube, um, or other websites such as Genially, um, I can't think of anything else right now, but for example, on my website, so this is my full website, you could see that I have a video here, it's a YouTube video and it looks, you know, like it was, it looks perfectly embedded, so that's an example of how you would use the embed option, so you would put the, the Google, um, sorry, the YouTube link here, press insert and it would appear. You might need to customize it and drag it and drop it around or like drag the edges to size it perfectly, but that's an option. Let me just see if I have anything else here that is also embedded. Oh, I have the the courses, e-learning courses embedded um, or a rise course embedded, but that's a slightly more di slightly more difficult. Or I have a genially presentation embedded, um, just to show you a couple of things. There we go. So you see, it appears within this website, so you don't have to direct people to the link of the genially. Okay, I changed the background uh, to gray, so that's not automatic. Okay, so that was the embed option. I'm going to cancel it now. You can also insert things from your drive. So anything that is saved there, you can just choose it um, from here and it will appear. I'm going to show you again a couple of things that I have embedded as um, this option on my website. Mm, mainly my job aids and infographics. So there we go. So I have, for example, a PDF embedded. So it's not uploaded as an image. Um, but it's a PDF, but actually I should, should, find, should be able to find you a better example. It works better with PDFs of many pages. Mm, so I have, for example, there we go. I have a PDF embedded here, right? So you could see that people can scroll up and down and see the whole document. Okay, so that's what the embed from Google Drive option is for. There are a few things that I would mention before you do that. Number one, you should make sure that the um, permission options are available. Like you set the permissions on the uh, on that document to be available to everybody. Otherwise, you might think it it's okay, but people will get an error image or like a no permission image here instead of the document. And the other thing, I just recently learned that you could um, change the settings in somewhere here can't remember how, it's not part of, <laughs> of this tutorial, but so that people can't download it. Okay, just some tips to share with you. Okay, going back here because I'm conscious of the time. So just wanted to point out the different inserting options here. So we've got the embed and the drive covered in this tutorial as well. We talked about the layouts as well. I never used table of contents or collapsible text. Table of contents usually works better for like uh, blogs when you have a lot of content and you would just want to put it on the top. It's really not editable enough. Collapsible text, let me just show you. We could do that here. So you can have something here and then a text here and then you could like reveal it. Unfortunately, it's only text that you can add here, no images, so there's not much purpose for me at least, but it's available and you could add more, um, etc. So that's available. I just wanted to show you that, but da -da -da. image carousel, quite good. I like it. I have on my home page, for example, an image carousel. Again, not much editing options there. It's very basic. So for example, in my testimonials, you, people can just flick through the images and I have testimonials here. Okay, so that's the image carousel. Um, pretty easy to set up. You just add images. You must have at least two images um, when you set it up, and then you can drag and drop the the images around if you wanna um, uh, do them in different order. And in the setting options, you can select whether you wanna show the dots, the captions, auto start, and the transition speed. Um, the dots are basically these here. Okay, 
So that's the carousel. I'm going to cancel it. Button. Oh, we didn't talk about button. Um, button is this. And then you can add the link. Again, same, same options as before. And for the button, you have three options. It could be filled, and it again takes the, co uh, the color from the themes, or it could be outlined. There you go. Or just a text. Uh, it looks nice, but when you hover over it, 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 it kind of gets a background color, so it's not that pleasant. And then you can add the, edit the button if you want to. Let me just go back and change it to field. And then you could drag it around um, and change the size. Now that reminds me that I forgot to mention one more thing with Google Sites, and that's probably the worst thing, because if you go and see my website, you will see that I have a very awkward button here at the top. It's a massive button. Um, you see the, the filling color here. Um, and the reason for that is that, uh, you remember I showed you those um, columns, those vertical lines that Google uses. Now, within one section, and this is a section, Google Sites only recognizes the, the column section. So if I want to move this up here, you see that the size of the section above is big. So it's going to make it that big because it can only align things within one column. And this is considered to be one column. So if I change this, I don't know why it does that. You see that this changes automatically with that. There's no way to work around that. The only way I could recommend if it ever happens is to take this and drag it out. And that's going to add a new section. Remember, we're talking about section. And once you're out of the section, it's not tied to this content anymore. Um, so that could work. The issue would be that there would be a slightly more space between these two. Um, when you look at the view than what you would have liked, but sometimes it works. It's just trial and, um, yeah, just try things and then see how it works. Okay, we talked about button. Divider is just a simple divider like that. Nothing extra, but I quite like it. A placeholder is just something like this, but you can uh, use it from the layouts as well. YouTube, you can use the embed, calendar, map, docs, da, da, da. these are all available from these options as well. Well, not all of them, not the map. I never use the map, so I can't really talk about it. Okay, what have we not talked about yet? We haven't talked about the these things here at the top. Obviously, undo, oh, I use Control Z, redo, preview, link, share with others if you want to. Uh, allow others to collaborate with you. And then let's talk about the settings here. Now, um, again, very limited options here. Uh, the navigation is basically this navigation here. There are only a few options. There's, it's at the moment it's on the top, but you see if I change it to the slide, uh, sorry, uh, side, I meant, that it is now different. It is now here. And then people have to click here to have it really re revealed almost like the same as in like the mobile view. Let's see what it would look like in the preview. Uh, there we go. That's what it would look like. If you prefer it, you can. That's These are the two options, to have it on the top or to have it on the side. Let me just say, change it back to the top. And then in terms of color, there are only three options. At the moment, it's transparent. It might be good, but there might be some readability issues if your um, header is a bit more colorful. Uh, and then you could change it to black or white. I have it black on my website. That's what it looks like. Or you could change it to white. But basically, these are the only options that you have, really. Okay, let's go back here and see what else we could do. Ooh, brand images. So you can upload your logo, which we haven't done yet. Not in the tutorial because um, that was not necessarily the, the purpose. Where's my... The, this one. Upload the logo and you see the logo appears here. 
that's what the logo does here. If you want to add all text, that's fine. And you can allow the Google to use your um, color for your theme, but we've already done that really. Now let's upload the Fav icon as well. Uh, a lot of people forget about the Fav icon. I've got the same for Fav icon. If you don't know what a Fav icon is, it's basically this thing. So right now you can't see it, but now that the Fav icon is uploaded, when I open it, um, let's say publish, you can see the changes that we've implemented. I'm just going to press publish. And when you uh, copy the link and open it, open it as a new website. There you go. You see? The Fev icon now has been applied. So we've got the logo here and we've got the Fev icon here. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but whatever. So we've got the logo and the Fev icon updated. Viewer tools. Um, I've never used this to be honest. Um, custom domains. Um, it's not connected at the moment. I can't really say anything about it because mine was really, really painful. Um, you might have an easier journey with your domain, but there will be more information about it in another lesson, not this one. Analytics, um, you can, let me just go to my my real website and show you um, how that works. So analytics, I have my website connected to Google Analytics. Um, and I enabled analytics so I can see some information about my visitors on my website where are they from what time they visited how much they spend on my website I mean it's not that important for me at all because I'm not really running a business but it is an option to set it up that is actually included in the more Google sites tips lesson so not here but the lesson but the link to this lesson will be attached to this lesson anyway so you can check it out if you want to not really a day three of the do it messy um, kind of setup topic but this tutorial is trying to cover everything that you might want to know perhaps in the future. Uh, an announcement banner, oh, I don't want to do that on my website, <laughs> um, announcement banner, um, you can create an announce banner and you could say show banner, banner color, I'm gonna create a silly looking banner, it's just for information, um, check out my new asset or whatever and then you can add a button uh, if you want click here and then uh, let's put it to the sample sample one and then we've got something attached to it and then you could say open in a new tab or whether you want to see people this banner on the home page only or all pages and then that's it. We don't need to save it because it's kind of turned on here. Ta-da! That's what it is. Um, yeah, just to show you that's also possible. Turn it off and then it disappeared. Okay, what else is available? We've got version history. If for any reason you want to go back to an earlier version because you made some changes that you no longer want. Um, yeah, and then in the publish one, here in the drop down, um, you could review changes and publish, unpublish your website as well. I never came here before, but yeah, okay, this is what it does. You could change your web address again here or add your custom domain, etc. Okay, that was everything I think there is to know about Google Sites. Hopefully, I covered everything. Hopefully, you found it useful. Google Sites, a lot of the things as you've seen had to, be edit, uh, had to be edited manually, but then you can easily duplicate them. It's easy, it's free, it's, it's, um, it, a lot of things are done automatically, which could be a curse or a blessing, it's up to you. Um, but this is how it's done. Play around with it, enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to seeing amazing creations with your Google Sites. Bye!